Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be kicking off episode 8 in our series, The Hitchhiker's Guide to D2R Modding, and we're going to be covering textures. Uh, so what you'll need to edit them, their limits, uh, how you can use them, all that kind of stuff. And as a reminder, if you are enjoying this modding content, uh, be sure to like the video and subscribe. It helps both of us know what uh, you're, you're liking. Um, and with all that out of the way, let's roll right into some of the textures, we'll, uh, texture information we'll be going over. Um, so the good news right off the bat is that textures are editable. Um, so there aren't really any restrictions as far as um, the actual edits you can do on a texture. Um, and if you don't know what a texture is, um, it's essentially just a 2D square image, or usually square, um, but a 2D image that's wrapped around a 3D object. Um, so that object in this case are models and particles um, in Diablo 2 Resurrected, but this is going to um, go over how to change the aesthetics, the looks of a lot of that stuff. Um, and we won't be adding any brand new textures in this video, but if you are adding just a, again, it's a brand new texture, a new file name, etc. Um, then you will need to add that information into texture desk cache dot JSON. Um, now that is, that is in just data HD. Um, so it's a easy edit. Um, and just like the other reference files where you're adding an item or a missile or something, you're just going to copy and paste a previous entry that's uh, that you either cloned or that's very close to it um, and edit it with the new file information and such that you need. Um, but uh, you will need to take care of that. Um, so with the real basics out of the way, uh, and before I open the program, we'll need to start editing and exploring all this. Um, just a quick breakdown of some of the differences. Um, as I mentioned before, you can use these for both models and particles. Um, however, what you need to worry about is going to differ slightly depending on where this texture is used. So if this texture is going to be used on a model, then there might be up to three different textures you have to edit in total. It'll just depend on your kind of visual goals. Uh, we will see an example of this in game as we start editing here in just a minute. Um, but just be aware there might be up to three textures you have to edit for a model, as well as when you go to edit your final texture, you are going to need to use a special command, and that command is dash dxt5. Uh, when you go to export that final texture, um, to have it work correctly. And in very rare cases, you'll have to use dash dxt1, but I would say 90, 95% of the time, it's gonna be this command for, for models. Um, for particles, uh, there's gonna be a few differences. One of them being is uh, unlike what you'll see here in a minute where everything's nicely organized and the textures are in their own folder, right with the character models and stuff. Um, the particle textures are kind of all over the place and, and they don't normally have um, an easy indicator of what particle is using that. Um, so when we do our walkthrough videos on adding textures to particles and editing those and stuff, uh, we'll go over uh, the script I made to find those and how you can start editing those. Um, but just know that most of them are going to be located in this folder here, HD VFX textures. And then within there, most of the ones you're going to want to edit um, for color purposes and such are going to be in the gradients folder or the pyro folder, uh, just simply because there's so many flames and stuff in Diablo. Um, and then finally with particles, not everything is based on a texture. While all models um, kind of fully rely on textures for their color, um, some particles have the color baked into the file itself. Um, and essentially, while there is some promising news um, that we might be able to do this in the future um, relatively soon, at least for now, anything that's baked into that file that's part of the dot particle file itself, we're not going to be able to, to edit. Um, if it's a texture that that particle file references, no problem, uh, but not an actual uh, built-in um, color, and that usually comes from like a lighting or a glow effect. Um, another quick thing to touch on um, with particles is some of them, uh, if we take a flame for example, will use textures to help define how the flame physically behaves. And what I mean by that is like how wavy the flame is, how much it, it uh, shuffles around, um, and that's using, again, textures to 
um, define curves and shapes and stuff as it wraps it around. So there are some instances where changing a texture will allow you to change the physical look um, of a particle um, without kind of editing the particle directly. Um, and then finally, uh, if you're editing a texture that's going to be used on a particle, um, instead of using the dash txt5 command, you're going to want to use dash rgba32. Um, again, 95% of the time this will be the case, but every once in a while you're going to run into that oddball or such that you're going to want to use dash txt1 on. Um, so now that you, we've broken down some of the differences, let's just go and show it all in action and we'll kind of put everything together and make sense of it. Uh, so I'm going to open Noesis. Um, so as a reminder, uh, you, we do uh, have everything we show in our videos linked on our website. Um, so the program we're using today is Noesis along with the uh, community plugins that people created for Resurrected. Um, and the link for all that is in the description. Um, so go ahead and download that and you can pick it up from there. And all we're gonna do is in this example, we'll do something simple like uh, we're gonna change how a car looks, change some of the colors on her outfit um, just to again, quickly show an example of how this can be done. Um, so for that, we're going to go to our Di Diablo 2 Resurrected folder from Noesis. Uh, we're going to go to HD Character uh, NPC, and we can see a car here. Um, now this program does let you export and kind of view models. So if I double click on the model now, it's going to load the textures onto this model as well. And we can get an idea of what she looks like. Um, obviously, you probably know what she looks like already, but as far as uh, in here goes, you can see how it's all visualized. Um, so she has a kind of purple upper half with her top with a dark bottom half and then, you know, lots of shiny uh, bling along her waistband and wrists and stuff. Um, now, if we go into the subfolder here, um, we can see all the textures and we can first see that um, she uses many textures for different things um, as well as different types for each one. And now we're going to go over kind of what those mean um, and why they might be important to you. Um, so the first type is the ALB, A-L-B. Um, this stands for albedo. Uh, this is going to be the primary texture you edit for all your uh, models and such. Um, as you can see from the kind of preview here, um, this is where the purple top and or her hood and all that is defined um, or uh, colored, um, and then this is all wrapped around her actual model, um, and that helps define her view. Um, so that's just going to be the, the primary visual we use. Um, sometimes you're going to want to edit the normals or the NRM, um, and that is giving the texture a lot of the depth information. So you can see the same skirt and sword and all that kind of stuff on here. Um, but as opposed to all the colors, now you can clearly see a little bit more of, again, the lighting, the shadows, and that's what uh, this file will be used for, um, is for Resurrected to fill in lights and shadows, how it thinks is best for that depth. And then finally, we have our ORM, or our Occlusion Roughness Metallic Layer. Um, so as the name might kind of sound like, um, this is going to help control some of the lighting, the reflectivity, um, some of the grain size uh, of the different, basically, materials that this texture is supposed to represent. Um, so you'll see uh, leathers and stuff don't have very much reflectivity, but your swords and buckles and stuff do. Um, so that's how all the different layers are broken down. However, primarily, I would say 90% of the time, you're only going to edit the albedo. Um, and then if it's just not quite right, you'll, you'll kind of dive into the normals or the ORM to, um, fine tune that look how you, you know, want. Um, but a lot of times you're just going to edit the albedo and, uh, you know, resave it and that'll be enough to accomplish your goals. Um, so we're just going to show that in action. Um, so I'm going to just select this, uh, albedo version and we're going to export that. Uh, you can use whatever you'd like. I'm going to select a PNG, and I'm just going to leave the file name as whatever it wants it for this example. So we'll just export that. And then we can see it here in our folder now in the uh, 
uh, same folder I got it from. Um, and we're just going to open that with Photoshop. Obviously, if you have GIMP or Paint or whatever the heck you want to use, you know, you can oh, open that and that instead. Um, and all I want to do, for example purposes, is change the color some. So right now it's largely purple. Um, so we're just going to slide this around and sure, we'll make it largely red. Um, so that's all we wanted to change. Obviously, it changed everything else too, but I'm just making an example. And uh, we're going to go ahead and save that. And we'll just add two here. So we've edited our texture to apparently what we want. Uh, so we're going to say we're good with that. Um, if I go back to the program, I don't see those files here in the in the folder. Uh, I just need to basically click out of the folder and back in to have the program refresh it. So we'll just click out, click back in, and now I can see those PNGs. So again, if we kind of double click this uh, Albout 2, now we'll see the edited one. And now we're ready to turn this back into a texture for resurrected. So I'm going to select export on the PNG this time. And we'll select dot texture from the drop down. And, and just a reminder, because this uh, texture is going to be used on a model, then we want to use the special command dash dxt5. So in this advanced options box, I'm just going to type in exactly that dash dxt5. Um, I'm going to leave the texture name as that because we're going to rename it and stuff anyways. But if you want to uh, you know, specify the name properly, go ahead and do that. And we're just going to select export. We don't need to worry about any of the other options. So we should get the export complete as long as you typed in the command correctly um, and you're, you know, doing all that. Um, so we're good there. And if we go back to our uh, folder once more, we'll see our brand new texture with the funky name there. So I'm going to copy this and we're going to put this in the mod folder so that we can see it in action. And so I've already created the necessarily uh, necessary folders up here. All I need to do now is just rename this to the original texture name. Um, and that way it's going to replace that original texture and we can see it kind of in game. Uh, so it's been renamed. Let's go ahead and start up the mod. And uh, now you'll be able to see how that edited texture looks. So I do hope you guys are enjoying the content. Uh, there will be many more episodes and kind of going more in depth on specific edits. Um, we're just trying to get over the vast amount of information so we can start diving in deeper to each topic. But with all that out of the way, you can see here, now we have our red top Takara with her funky uh, um, colored bands and things now that because uh, we didn't really you know focus on quality with our color edit there um, but you can see that that red is not the same exact red um, that we saved it as um, you can see the you know one in game looks a lot darker um, you know there's a lot more kind of difference between um, light and dark um, and that's simply because of these other kind of layers we talked about. Um, as Diablo 2 goes to apply the depth information and then further applies the metallicity and the lighting and stuff like that of each material, um, then you get this final look. Um, so just to, again, most of the time, this albedo will be all you need. Um, you can adjust the uh, color shades just slightly to get a different look if it wasn't quite what you wanted the first time, um, for example, you know, with the, the red shade. Um, but every once in a while, you're, you know, either real picky or just not turning out the way you want because of the metallicity or something. Um, you can open up these other ones, edit them to your liking. Um, and again, once they're all combined, that is the final kind of look that you see in game. Um, but now that we've done all that, we've explored kind of the basics of textures. Uh, we will go into adding new textures and um, how it gets a little complicated when you start adding them into models and particles. Um, but for now, uh, I hope this has been an intro into it that you can understand and start using right away. Um, hope, thank you for sticking around to the end, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Take care. Bye.